Hello, this is Bob and a new story on Bob Short Stories channel. Robert loved his job as a gravedigger. He enjoyed working outdoors, in the fresh air, and the quiet of the cemetery. He felt a sense of satisfaction and honor in providing a final resting place for the departed souls. He was not afraid of death or the dead. He had seen enough of both in his life. He lived in a small town in Montana, where everyone knew each other and gossip traveled fast. He had a modest house, a rusty truck, and a loyal dog named Boatsman. He did not have a family of his own, but he considered the cemetery caretaker, Mr. Jones, as his friend and mentor. Mr. Jones was an old man who had been working at the cemetery for decades. He knew every grave, every name, and every story behind them. Robert did not come to work every day, only when there was a need for a new grave. Usually, graves were dug by a special excavator, but many relatives of the deceased wanted a traditional funeral, and on the outskirts of the cemetery in a hard-to-reach place, the excavator could not get to the digging site. So the grave diggers were still not idle. Robert did not mind the hard work. He liked to dig with his own hands, feeling the earth and the stones. He felt a connection with the land and the people who would be buried in it. One morning, he received a call from Mr. Jones, who told him to come to the cemetery as soon as possible. There was an urgent case, a young woman who had suddenly died from poisoning. Robert wondered what had happened to her, but he did not ask too many questions. He grabbed his shovel, his jacket, and his hat, and drove to the cemetery. Boatsman jumped into the truck, wagging his tail. He loved to accompany Robert to the cemetery, where he could run around and sniff the flowers and the tombstones. He also loved Robert, because Robert often treated him to delicious food, such as sausages, cheese, and biscuits. When Robert arrived at the cemetery, he saw Mr. Jones waiting for him at the gate. He greeted him with a smile and a handshake, and then followed him to the place where he had to dig the grave. It was a secluded spot, under a large oak tree. The ground was covered with fallen leaves and acorns. Robert noticed a small wooden cross with a name and a date on it. It read, Mary Smith, 1998 to 2023. Who was she? Robert asked Mr. Jones as he began to mark the outline of the grave with a shovel. She was a writer. She was a pretty woman, blonde and blue-eyed. She always had a smile on her face. What happened to her? Mr. Jones shook his head and sighed. She got married yesterday to a rich businessman from out of town. His name is Richard Wilson. He owns a chain of hotels and casinos. According to his words, he came here a few months ago and he swept her off her feet. He promised her an eternal love of luxury and happiness. She was over the moon. Then how did she die? Poisoning. That's what the doctors said. She ate some bad meat last night at the wedding reception. She got sick in the morning and by noon, she was gone. Just like that. Robert felt a pang of sadness and anger. He could not believe that such a young and beautiful life had been cut short by such a cruel fate. He wondered if it was really an accident, or if there was something more sinister behind it. He looked around, and saw a man standing near the cross. He was wearing a solid suit, with a round belly and a gold watch. He had a smug and hostile look on his face. He was holding a briefcase in one hand, and a cigar in the other. He was Richard Wilson, the husband of the dead woman. Robert did not like him at all. He felt a wave of disgust and suspicion. He walked over to him and introduced himself as the grave digger. Richard barely acknowledged him and said that the ceremony would take place at 3 p.m. and there would be no relatives since poor Mary had not. He said that he would pay for the digging of the grave, participation in the burial and installation of the monument, and also wrote a check for $1,000. He handed it to Robert, who took it reluctantly. The payment was meager for such work and Robert did not want to take the money from Richard's hands, so he put the check on the table and pressed it down with a stone so that it would not fly away from the wind. It was not the first time for Robert to see such unpleasant clients, but here everything was very suspicious. Robert returned to his work and began to dig the grave. He worked fast and hard, breaking the soil and the rocks. He wanted to finish as soon as possible and get away from Richard and his cold and greedy eyes. He felt sorry for Mary, who had been deceived and betrayed by the man she loved. He wondered if she had any friends, or anyone who cared for her. He wished he had known her better, and maybe he could have helped her, or warned her, or saved her. He dug for an hour, until he reached the required depth. He climbed out of the hole and wiped the sweat from his brow. He looked at his watch, and saw that it was almost 2 p.m. He wondered where the coffin was, and why it had not arrived yet. He hoped that it would not be too late, and that he could bury Mary before the sun set. 
he did not want to leave her alone in the dark. With Richard lurking around, he heard a sound of a car engine and saw a black hearse driving into the cemetery. Boatsman moved his ears and barked in the direction of the entrance. He ran towards the hearse, hoping to get a treat from the driver. Robert followed him and greeted the driver, who was a young man with a friendly face. He asked him to help unload the coffin, which was oak, very heavy. They carried it to the grave and placed it on the straps. The driver said that they should bury it in a closed coffin, as ordered by the customer. He was indignant at how they could bury a woman so quickly without an autopsy. Apparently, there was some bribery or forgery involved, but that was none of his business. The driver's departure ushered in an oppressive silence, broken only by the rustling of wind through the pines and the distant cawing of crows. Robert stood alone beside the freshly dug grave, his gaze fixed upon the imposing oak coffin. Its polished surface reflected the harsh Montana sun, casting an eerie glow amidst the somber hues of the cemetery. Despite years of experience as a gravedigger, Robert couldn't shake a sense of unease as he approached the coffin. The absence of relatives was unusual, leaving him with the sole responsibility of bidding farewell to the young woman within. He felt a strange compulsion to confirm her peaceful repose, to grant her the dignity of a final witness. With a grunt of exertion, Robert pried open the heavy lid, the aged hinges groaning in protest. A gasp escaped his lips as he beheld the woman's serene countenance. Her skin held a delicate warmth, a stark contrast to the chilling finality of the coffin. Her chest, though still, seemed poised to rise with breath at any moment. Three hours deceased, the documents had declared. Yet, she appeared as though merely slumbering, her features untouched by the rigors of death. A shiver coursed through Robert as he recalled the driver's words. Closed coffin, as ordered by the customer. A knot of suspicion tightened in his gut. A jarring melody pierced the silence, shattering the illusion of tranquility. Robert's gaze darted to the source, a sleek iPhone nestled beside the woman's hand. An offering for the afterlife, perhaps a gesture of love or desperation. But as the phone continued its insistent siren song, Robert felt a creeping sense of dread. Hesitantly, he answered the call. A young girl's face filled the screen, her bright eyes filled with anticipation. Mommy, why don't you answer? Remember, you promised to take me to dance club tonight. Her smile faltered as she registered Robert's unfamiliar features. Confusion clouded her innocent gaze. Robert's heart pounded against his ribs. How could he shatter this child's world with the cruel truth? He fumbled for words, his tongue heavy with the weight of the unknown. Your mother, she can't come to the phone right now, he managed, his voice thick with emotion. With a trembling hand, he ended the call, plunging the cemetery back into an unsettling quiet. The sun dipped lower in the sky, casting long shadows that danced like mourners among the tombstones. Robert stood frozen, caught in a maelstrom of questions and dread. The woman's inexplicable warmth, the hasty burial, the absent relatives, and now, a child's innocent plea echoing in his ears. Something was terribly wrong, and he was determined to uncover the truth. The chill of the grave seeped into Robert's bones as he stood over the woman's still form. His fingers traced the unexpected fold above her lips, a faint glimmer of hope kindling within his hardened heart. A whisper of breath, a flutter of eyelids, and then a voice as fragile as a cobweb. Don't worry, daughter, everything will be fine. Mary blinked, disoriented, as if awakening from a nightmare. Robert's call to the paramedics shattered the cemetery's tranquility, their sirens echoing through the rows of tombstones like a defiant cry against death's clutches. Within the sterile walls of the hospital, Mary recounted her tale of betrayal and near death. Her inheritance, a gift from a loving husband who had passed five years prior, had attracted a serpent into her life. A man with honeyed words and a heart of ice, seeking to bury her fortune alongside her body. Robert's actions had unraveled a tapestry of deceit. The hasty burial, the absent relatives, the closed coffin, each thread woven into a shroud of treachery. But fate, it seemed, had other plans. A gravedigger's suspicion, a daughter's desperate plea, and the resilience of a woman cheated of her life had conspired to rewrite Destiny's script. As Mary recovered, Robert's own secrets surfaced. His disguise of gray wig and false beard concealed not a sinister motive, but a heart steeped in sorrow. His beloved wife, lost to cancer's cruel embrace, had found her final rest in the very same cemetery. His job as a gravedigger, a poignant act of devotion, a way to linger near her memory. In the heart of tragedy, a bond blossomed. Mary found solace in Robert's understanding, his shared grief a bridge connecting their souls. The man who had pulled her from death's doorstep now offered a hand to lead her back into the light of life. 
The city park now bears witness to a tale of resilience and newfound love. A woman, once entombed in darkness, walks hand in hand with her daughter, laughter echoing through the trees. At their side, a man with gentle eyes and a heart that understands loss, offering strength and companionship. The whispers of the past linger, but they no longer hold power. The gravedigger's shovel, once a symbol of endings, now represents a beginning. A testament to the enduring strength of the human spirit, the unwavering power of love, and the unwavering defiance of hope against the specter of despair. In the embrace of their newfound love, Robert, Mary, and her daughter forge a path forward, weaving a tapestry of resilience and healing, proving that even in the darkest corners of life, love can find a way to bloom.